All right, we come to uh, a section on sampling, and we talked about before that if you um, want to do some surveying and grab some stats, you can actually sample uh, a group of people. So um, this whole section looks at how do you sample and what do you call the group of people you're looking at and those kind of things. So to derive good stats, you need to be able to define really clearly the population you're going to be grabbing your sample from. A population is, is described or defined as all the people or items with the characteristics that you're trying to find out about. Okay, so it's everything that's similar. So if you're going to interview uh, Year 9's views on what music they like, then your population might be all the Year 9's in South Australia, or it might be all the Year 9's in your school. So you've just got to be careful how you define the, uh, the population. Obviously, the best way to go would be to survey absolutely everyone, but you can't do that because it's very cost um, inefficient. It takes a long time, um, and there are hassles with that as well. So you, you need an alternative rather than asking everyone, and this is called sampling. And there is a couple of things you can do. There's a couple of ways you can sample, but I just want to talk about you know, your theories in behind your sampling. So a sample must... The sample that you choose has got to represent the characteristics of the population. So if you've got a gender split in your population, then you need to make sure that your sample is representative of that. If you've got more boys than girls in the sample, then um, in the population, sorry, then in the sample, you've got to have more boys and girls because it's representative. Um, so the sample needs to be large enough. It needs to be large enough and have similar characteristics to the whole population. Notice it's not exactly the same characteristics as the whole population, but similar. So when you draw your conclusions, it's reflective of what the population um, has or is, is about. So your sample also has to be random, which means that every person has a chance of being selected, very much like cross lotto. So if you can imagine, you've got these people, you've got Fred, Fred, Betty, Bob and Jane, and we put their names in a hat or a number, a ball, you know, one, two, three and four, and then throw them into a hat and then stick our hand into the hat and pull out a ball, then every person has the same chance of being selected. If I pull out number three, then I've selected Bob. If I pull out number one, I select Fred. But it's completely random. There's no way that I can kind of, kind of rig that. Now, however, if we um, want a definition of random, the best definition is every member has an equal chance of being selected or every member of the population having an equal chance of being selected is a random sample. Now how does what happens if it's not a random sample? It's called having a biased sample or a sample with bias which then brings in errors. Okay, the whole idea is you want to reduce the errors that you have. Now, bias is when not every member has an equal chance of being selected. So if you think again of Fred, Betty, Bob, um, and Bob, if we put two Bobs, if we put uh, Bob's name in twice into that hat when we were drawing, our, drawing out the numbers, then Bob's got more chance of being selected than Betty or Fred because there's two more chances that he can be selected. So therefore, it is in his favour, so if it's biased towards him, which means that the sample that we'll get has bias in it, which means there are going to be errors there. So if you think of bias with lawn bowls, when you get a lawn bowl, if you roll it down, it, it doesn't go straight. It goes one way or the other way. What we're looking for is like a 10-pin bowling ball that goes straight. And you only get that if every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. So how big should you make a sample? Because, you know, we're talking about making sure that your sample is big enough to be able to see what you're on, but how big should it be? There's a couple of ways of doing this. There's a couple of mathematical formulas you can use. And one that we use, which is an approximate one, is getting your sample size being the square root of n plus 10% times by n, where n equals the population you're looking at. Okay, so you get your population, your total population, find the square root of it, then find 10% of that population and add it together, and that gives you an approximate kind of outline of how big your sample should be. So I've got an example down the bottom here. It's got, if your population is 47,621, our sample size is going to be the square root of 47,621. Add 10% of that, which gives you 4,980.32. And if you're sampling people, okay, you're going to round it up to the next one, which is 4,981. That's how big our sample would be. So once again, that still is an approximate sample because um, there may be characteristics within that population that you haven't taken into account. So the only way that's really, really worth looking at is a thing called population mean versus sample mean. Now in population mean versus sample mean, we look at um, if we surveyed everyone, what would their average be? And if we compare it to our sample, let's see how close we get. Okay, you're not going to get it exactly spot on, but you're going to get closer. And the closer it is, it means more representative sample. So if you have a look here, we've got a whole lot of numbers. And in this one here, I've taken 
all these numbers here and found the average and I get an average in column one there my average is 43 so if I took f if I was going to sample this and just took the kit people out of that first column I'd get an answer of 43 this cell here 51.3 is every number that's listed there which means that if I was going to survey everyone I'd get an, a, a, an average of 51.3 if you have a look at our first column, our first column just gives us an average of 43, so that's quite a long way out of that 51.3 average. So as we go along here, I'm sampling more columns. So this number here, the 57.7, .7, is the first average of all the numbers in the first two columns. Notice how it's getting closer to the 51.3. Once we go to three columns, 53, and then four columns, 52, and then it starts kind of getting pretty close to that 51.3 mark. So really, if you sampled these ones here, let's grab another, well, if I sampled the numbers here and that was going to be my sample out of the population which is all the numbers in that table, that's pretty close to my population mean. So that is representative of how much my sample would be. So as long as your sample is representative of the population in terms of the characteristics and your population mean is pretty similar to your sample mean, then you've got the right size sample for your survey and then when you analyze your data you've got an outcome there which is going to make sure that you reduce your errors and then you can make good conclusions.